you know, after my last game review of this series so far against the Leafs, I'm gonna have to start calling this channel a Connor Hellebuck fan page because this guy is just, without a doubt, one of the best goaltenders in the NHL and I think slowly working his way into a top discussion for some of the greats of all time when you look at the workload he takes on the amount of games he plays and how consistently good he is he is one of the best in the league without a doubt and he really showed that tonight in this 4-3 loss in overtime that the Leafs took over the Jets in the second game of this three game series against the for the both the teams and it just it wasn't a bad game for a lot of players but it was a bad this is the same thing I've been preaching on this channel a lot we have these games for the Jets where it's these individual performances are just outstanding where the offense looks good and individually they're just players that are always standing out always making improvements from the top line to the bottom line I've given a lot of praise to a lot of guys there and I have done the exact same thing with the defense a lot of the times with the defense we have a lot of good individual performances Derek Forbert at the start of the year for example Logan Stanley as well coming in as a rookie even Neil Pionks lately who's been on fire and been playing as one of our best defenders and one of the best defenders in the northern division let me just add with the whole well he's been moving the puck but again all of these things are individual performances and when we hearken on a team and what it takes to win in the National Hockey League individual performances are always important because you need to have your top players playing like the top players that's a given that's a dumb question it's like asking whether or not you're good without having all your star players in the lineup we've seen what that looks like for teams in the past and even the Jets last year against Calgary we know what they look like and we need individual performances to be standout that's without a doubt but in my same my personal opinion as a fan of this team the defense is a whole it just cannot rely on individual performances the offense can rely on great individual performances because of how much depth and talent there is there but with our defense we can't rely on it as well and I would even go to the extent that saying we have that reliance with our goaltending as well and the fact that Connor Hellebuck is a genius and a god back there he looks so good every time he plays and faces a hard workload he just looks such like so efficient and just such like a good goalie and the problem with all of this is that Lauren Brassois is also a good goaltender and has proven this season and in his first year, not so much last year, but even time, still looking strong, that he is a good, reliable backup goaltender. And that's something that the Jets rely on a lot. Their forwards carrying them and their goalies playing outstanding. And then they have this spot, soft spot in the defense where they rely on a couple individual performances to carry them. And I'm not going to lie, this game wasn't a horrible game for the Winnipeg Jets. And that's why I'm not in a negative mood about this at all. When I look at this game, I see nothing but really good performances from the offense. At times, they were outplayed, but yet again, Look at the Leafs' offensive talent. They have so much talent. They match the Jets in talent, in my opinion, in a lot of different areas. But again, I give the speed favor to the Leafs because they got more guys that are faster compared to Blake Wheeler and Paul Stasty. That slows the Jets down a little bit in their top six. Nonetheless, that's not what I'm here to hearken on. I'm here to talk about how, in my opinion, games like this where the defense just checks out and abandons Connor Hellebuck from basically the second period onward. The first period, they were able to eliminate some of the more um, you know scary chances while still making him have a hard workload they were still able to keep any like hard really good scoring opportunities some of that compared to what we saw later on in the game so I'll give them credit for that but after that Individual performance is just not enough to carry this defense, so that was a good example tonight. Josh Morrissey has just been a shell of himself. I've been saying this all year. After praising him in my last video, saying how he's looked better and how he's looked a good more, you know, like the Josh Morrissey of old in the past couple games, this game he reverts back to kind of just being very sluggish and this really slow, weird way of not being able to move the puck at all type guy that we've seen for most of this season so far. There were times where he just made passes to nobody in the own, his own end, and it just it was not good plays, and I wasn't happy with his game tonight. Other than that, though, I did like Newton Pionk's game and Derek Forbitt. In my opinion, they had a great game in the transition, and they were really good offensively at times jumping in, but they were just liable, really, really liable today in their own end. I just did not like their play defensively. They were giving up some really scary opportunities that the Leafs had, and I think that that's something that the Jets are going to have to work on in the future is having, with that pairing, is having Forbitt go back to some of that way he would be able to stay at stay at home guy from the Kings, where he was good at the two-way game, but he did cover for Drew Doughty pitching so much. So I want to see that happen. I think Pionk can grow his offense more and although Forbit can jump in on the rush let him hang back a little bit I think that pairing is has a little kinks to work out and before they become the Jets real number one pairing I really think they do have the they are the best pairing on the Jets have this season for consistency I just want to see their defensive transition and let that back into the defensive end from being so offensive be a little bit better if they're not so to liability in their own end I think they're one of the better pairings in the northern division really when you look at the way that they're moving to contribute offensively and move the puck through their uh, neutral zone and pump it into the offensive zone and really get the rush going I really like that line they're just not that good in their own end and that's okay because we saw that this game but the problem is is that there needs to be more of a cohesiveness defensively with this club because in my opinion as well 
the forward core was just not really doing much defensively or on their own end. And although the forward core played great, I'm not going to deny, Nikolai Ehlers had another fantastic game and just proving himself why I'm jumping on this campaign and starting this campaign and of getting Nikolai Ehlers some more recognition because he is just fantastically good. He is so underrated in the Northern Division. He's one of the best wingers, in my opinion, in the entire division, and he makes a case to be one of the best the wingers in the National Hockey League. The way he moves the puck, how dynamic he is, he's just such a good driver, and today he really, really drove play, in my opinion, and it was really good to see. He crashed the net hard, he was shooting, making really good plays, and I really liked Nikolai Ehlers' game today. And like I said, this isn't me being having, I have my negative thoughts in this game, but I still think that there was a lot of good play out of this game, but as a whole, defensively, there is something wrong with this club, and it's just something that is going to have to be addressed sooner than later. It's just something that will come back and bite us in the butt, like this game did, for example. At times, I really thought the Jets were going to be able to pull this game out, but when you leave your goaltender out to dry, as much as the Jets have in the last two games, you're bound to, you know, unfortunately have games like this where it's nice to get the point, but you want to get that the win. The Jets had it in their hands at times. They looked very, very good. Although the Leafs looked very good as well, it was a really good game for both clubs. I'm not saying that I just thought the Jets had a really good opportunity to really win this game, but they abandoned Connor Hellebuck at times. You can't allow your goaltender to, against a really top-tier team like the Leafs to give up to face 76 shots in two games and, you know, come out winning both of those games. That's just not a really good me method to rely on to be successful against any type of talented hockey team in the NHL. It's just something that you just shouldn't be doing in my opinion, you should be having a more better defensive game, and especially just blocking up the lane and taking shots away. If that's the best you can do, you know, that's something, at least that's some type of defensiveness that might work, because the Jets do have a pretty good stick game, in my opinion. I just want to see more of more defense. I really don't like this passive style of defense the Jets play, and relying on Connor Hellebuck to have such a big workload. Although Connor Hellebuck is a better goaltender when he faces a good amount of workload, it comes to a limit where maybe have him pick up that workload in the third, but don't abandon him from basically the first period and onward. And then, even then, in the first period, he still had a lot of shots. They just weren't as dangerous, as my opinion, as some of the other shots that were attempts that were allowed on him later on in the second and third. And that's the kind of problem that I'm hearkening on this thing, game, is that although the defense wasn't necessarily horrendous and there wasn't horrible play, there just is this lack of cohesiveness on this club that allows them to play the best hockey they can play. And that's playing defense, unfortunately, is what's holding them back. I could go on and on about how much I thought that Logan Stanley even coming back in played good, but he was a little sluggish defensively, and that was limit. That did have a problem with the way the defense was. He did play, in my opinion, good, but and when I say sluggish, it's not like I'm harking on the guy. I really thought he had a pretty all right game after being out for such a long time. I really thought that Paul Maurice was going to go with Sammy Niku in this decision and put him in since he was the more fresher guy, considering out of all those in the taxi squad. I was still happy he jumped in and he played a pretty all right game. But Stanley, from the start of the season, has had this issue where he's just a little slow at moving the puck as a rookie. In the NHL is a big man that happens. It's just the way it is. But that slowed down the defense a lot, and it kind of made things problems, a little bit of problems there, and no one really car carried that type of workload that was created from Stanley bringing that element to the club tonight and into, that, into the decor. And that's just a little thing I've noticed. It's just not a good cohesiveness within this club defensively. The Jets could be one of the best teams in the league, and they are a very good team in the league, and in a top team in the league, without a doubt. Some could argue that they're top five in the league with the way the talent is forwardly. But as a diehard fan of this club who watches every game and watches it and really cares about this and knows how hockey is played to a lot of an extent, I just don't think that this is a reliable, consistent way to win hockey games if you're an NHL team trying to win a Stanley Cup. The Jets just need to address this defense. And I know I keep going to harking on that, but it's just something that I want to point out, and it's not being being pessimistic either, because I just it's very obvious that the Jets do this consistently when you look at the past games. It's just something that's going to have to be addressed eventually. When it'll be addressed, who knows, considering how long this has been going on for. But if the Jets consistently have good play from their forwards, are able to drive the play well in a lot of different areas, that's what really matters in my opinion. And this game really showed that with how much really good talent there was. Not even to mention the fact that I didn't even talk about how, in my opinion, the second line is so much more dynamic than the first line, but the first line still being pretty damn good at hockey. That's just such a really nice feature to have of your club. Like, the Jets have so much good good talent on this team, without a doubt. And I'm not saying they're a bad club when I hearken on problems. I hearken on these problems because they are holding the Jets back. In my opinion, if you have a more stronger defensive game tonight, I think the Jets could win this game. I really do. Although Connor Hellebuck did save keep them in it a lot of it, you can't rely on him to keep that up. Because 
what happens if there's games where Connor Hellebuck has the 7-1 games? And maybe those don't happen very often, but what are the games where Connor Hellebuck can't stop one of those shots? He can't get the breakaway save. And then the Jets are losing again, and they have to play chase up. And how much can we ask of the offense to carry that every night? How much can we ask of Connor Hellebuck? How consistent can this be? And how promising and good of a method to visit to win it's nice to get the one point tonight and this wasn't a horrible game in any area and there's nothing really horribly negative to talk about it's just this lack of cohesiveness that i keep coming back to and hearkening on in almost every game reaction cap that i recap that i do the jets just need to play a better offensively forward driven game where they can transition back and play defense and not have to rely so much on the offense being as dynamic and you know great as it is because the jets should be the jets offensively and not have a problem there the problem is when it gets to the other side of the net the game it feels like a different hockey game when I watch the Jets offensively I'm on the edge of my I'm on the edge of my seat watching it because I'm excited and can't wait to see what happens when I watch them in the defensive end I don't even leave from the edge of the seat because my heart drops and my heart rate goes up a thousand beats per minute because I'm terrified of what's going to happen because of how the Jets look defensively they're not a good team we all know this but in my opinion it's just looking shakier and shakier as the weeks go by this season it really really has and even with DeMello being out tonight and Stanley coming in and the defense playing a good team and not playing consistently bad isn't a problem it's just that they're going to need to work on this if they want to really be that true number one contender that they were back in 2018 when they made that run to the western conference final they're missing that type of buffling guy and i know that oh and that's really what it comes down to they're missing a stud on the blue line to carry a lot of the workload and mesh everything together that one kind of glue guy that's really talented for that top pairing josh morrissey ain't it and jacob truba wasn't the answer either it's we just need a really good strong guy in the room that can bring that and play good Good top line meaning hawking and i really hope that that can get addressed somehow and that's in the future with shovel day off but other than that i think that this was a pretty good game for the jets in a lot of different areas of the ice like i talked about a lot of you know an issue there with the cohesiveness and structure of the defense throughout the whole team but that doesn't take away from the fact that the Jets played a pretty good damn game to get the Maple Leafs tonight, and who are a very, very good opponent in this league. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below, as always, guys. What were your thoughts on this game? What were your thoughts on everything and the elements of this? Connor Hellebuck, the coaching. Let me know it all down in the comment section below, as always. You know I appreciate reading those thoughts. It's and, you know it's very insightful to see how what the fans think, and I really do appreciate those interactions. Also, guys, I want to let you know that if you haven't already followed me on Twitter, my Twitter link is in the description below. If you want to hear me share my opinions on things that happen throughout the day on Jets Twitter and just in the Twitter world around the NHL, but I don't have time to make videos on that's definitely where you want to be so definitely give me a follow down there also subscribe regardless of the team you root for as we're trying to push that 1k subscribers Leafs fans if you're watching I do appreciate the support and what's a uh, Leafs fan subscribing to a Jets fan we got that you know good rivalry why not right exactly thank you guys so much for watching this video peace love and positivity as always ladies and gentlemen and I will see you in the next video go Jets go